What's going on, guys? And welcome to How to Get 24 Plus on the Writing Section. First of all, let me say that I am not going to do an overview of the writing section here. So if you're not sure about the TOEFL writing or if you're still new to it, I'll leave a link in the description below to a couple of other videos that would be more helpful. This video is specifically for students who have taken the TOEFL writing before or know a bit about it and they're not really sure how to improve their score. Lots of students need a 24 or higher, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm going to show you two strategies in particular. The first strategy I'm going to do is, what we're going to do together, is we're going to talk about ultimate templates. And basically what they are is advanced templates with a little bit more complicated grammar and vocabulary, and I'm going to explain how it works. And you'll feel pretty comfortable using it by the end. Also, I'm going to show you what conditional sentences are, a very brief overview of conditional sentences and why they are important to put in your writing. Both of these things are going to help expand your vocabulary and grammar, which is crucial to get a 24 or higher in TOEFL writing. My name is Josh McPherson. I am the head instructor at tstprep.com, where our mission is simple, to help you get a TOEFL score you need as quickly and easily as possible. And today, we're going to talk about the TOEFL writing section. Really quickly, I just want to promote our new course, the TOEFL writing section course, how to get 24 plus in two simple steps. It's now available at our site, tstprep.com. And this is just a little taste of everything that's available in that course, okay? Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about templates. Now, I'm sure that you probably use templates, but I wanna show you actually how to use advanced templates and why they're important. So let me start with that why they're important. And to do that, we have to look at the grading and how the TOEFL writing is graded. So I'm gonna need my computer, so come with me, guys. So before I show you the advanced templates and how to use conditional sentences, I just first want to quickly go over how the test is graded, how the writing section is graded. So uh, Michael Goodon from TOEFL Resources recently came out with an excellent video about the grading criteria. If you have 20 minutes to spare, I definitely recommend it, and I will link to it in the link below. Uh, he goes through a couple different areas of how the test is graded, and all this information is from ETS and from uh, academic research. And basically, there are two parts that I, I broke it down uh, even less than how he broke it down to make it really simple, is that you are graded on organization and development, which is basically your structure, and then vocabulary and grammar. And if you notice that your organization and development is about 65% of your grade, and about 35% is vocabulary and grammar. But I am going to be focusing on the smaller number, the vocabulary and grammar. Grammar, excuse me. Why is that? Because most students who come to me who say that they're struggling with the TOEFL, they can't get the score that they want, and I look at their essays, almost all the students know templates. Almost all of them know to give a personal example. Almost all of them know how to organize their paragraphs but they have some problems with vocabulary and grammar, and that's the thing that's holding them back. And that's also a really hard thing to fix. The structure is actually kind of easy uh, to follow once you know about templates. Once you start getting into the nitty gritty and trying to improve your writing, that's when it's vocabulary and grammar, and that's where it gets really difficult. So I've created templates, ultimate templates, I call them advanced templates, to help show that you have a more expansive vocabulary and a more expansive grammar. And I'm gonna show you an example from one for the independent writing. So we want to improve our vocabulary and grammar, so let me show you these advanced templates. And I'm just gonna show you one. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below for, uh, for, the, other, for the template, what is it, like PDF download thing that you can get. Okay, so here it is. So you'll notice that there are going to be longer sentences, more sophisticated vocabula vocabulary, more complicated grammatical structures, and more colloquial phrases. So first, let me just show you the kind of basic template that you're probably used to, okay? So here, there is no shortage of opinion on, so this is a nice little phrase to start, and you have to say the question a different way. So if the question is something like, 
um, give your friend advice on the healthiest way to, or the best way to lose weight. So there's no shortage of opinion on ways to lose weight or on the best way to lose weight, whatever it is. In my opinion, I think that the best way to lose weight is to diet and exercise. I feel this way for two main, okay, so, so on. And, and let me make something very clear that you can get even a perfect score with these traditional templates. They, they don't, you don't need an advanced template to get a high score. It's just if you're struggling, it's because of your vocabulary and grammar. So we're going to use an advanced template to try to help you boost that. All right. Now let's look at the advanced template for the same introduction. No one can deny that there are both positive and negative aspects of. Okay, so if you notice here, I use the phrase, no one can deny. So that, like there's no shortage of opinion of, it's also a phrase. Okay, so when you use these kind of phrases, the e-reader actually can pick up on those phrases. It's been programmed to be able to identify idioms, colloquial phrases, and so on. So you want to use them. And then... The next sentence you'll see, if I were forced to choose, comma, I would definitely. So you have a comma in there. You have to use a conditional sentence. I'm going to talk about this next. Uh, so it's a more complicated grammatical structure. The next thing you'll see is that it is my firm belief that, so instead of saying, I feel this way, it is my firm belief. And this phrase, firm belief, is a phrase. You want to try to include phrases, commas, longer sentences, and these are things that the e-rater, which is the computer that grades your essay, know, has been programmed to pick up on. And also, by the way, the graders, the human graders, will also uh, see that you're writing at a pretty advanced level. Uh, is my firm belief that, and then you paraphrase the question, so, and for a number of reasons, and again, I put another comma here, and I'll develop these ideas in the subsequent paragraph, so this kind of difficult vocabulary, uh, instead of saying following paragraph, subsequent. So we try to just make the vocabulary a bit richer, and try to make the sentences a bit longer. So it's just these little things. You want to stack these little things up, and these little things pile on each other, and they help you get to the next level. So that's the advanced template for the introduction for the independent writing. Uh, I'm actually not going to go into too much detail with this because you can just take a look at it on your own and see. I just wanted to introduce the idea, and you can see why I've developed these templates this way. And if you look at the e-reader features really quickly, there are a couple things that they are programmed to look for. Now, this is not a list of all the things that they're to look for. These are things that are easy for other writing programs to program in a robot, basically. So these are just easy things for a computer to check for your essay. And so obviously, ETS, the company who makes the TOEFL, will use this criteria to help grade your essay. Here's a couple of examples. The amount of words in your uh, essay, of course. Repeated words. If you say the same word too much, it might hurt your score. It will hurt your score. The amount of phrasal verbs and idioms. Yeah, you want to try to use these colloquial phrases. You don't want to use too many idioms, like, I'm so hungry I can eat a horse or something like that, because then that's a little too casual. But you do want to use colloquial phrases, phrases that have uh, two or more words, uh, because they show a advanced level of vocabulary. They can also see the average length per word. They can take all of your words into account and see how long your average words are. They can see how the average length of your sentences, if your sentences are too short, that could be a problem. And they could also count the number of commas you have. So you see all of this stuff builds on each other. So that's why you want to use these advanced templates. And you'll notice some of them are pretty similar. There's some phrases that are similar, but there's just a couple extra things that will really help boost your score to the next level to get 24. Now, and some of you might be wondering, why don't you start with advanced templates? Why aren't these the first templates that teachers teach? Uh, because the first goal of any teacher is to just get you uh, used to the structure of the TOEFL. And these simple templates work for the most part. They, they work well. So th there's not really too much of a reason to teach you an advanced template unless you can improve your score. If you can't improve your score, and that's why you're watching this video right now, probably, then that's why you need to start using a more advanced template. 
The next thing I want to talk about is conditional sentences. Now, I'm not going to turn this into a grammar lesson because, to be honest, it would be pretty boring. Uh, and just conditional sentences are, you know, they're not so easy to teach, to be honest, and they're not so easy to learn. And so I don't want you to learn about conditional sentences. I want to teach you two specific places with two specific types of conditional sentences for you to use a conditional sentence in your essay. I'm going to just show you two places in your independent essay where you can use it. Now, hopefully by now you understand why you should put a conditional sentence in your essay because it makes your sentence longer and the e-rater is checking for that. All right, so let's get right into it. So the first place that you should put your conditional sentence, and you saw it already, is in your introduction paragraph of the independent essay. And I've already shared it with the ultimate template, but I'll show it here in action when this question, your friend wants to lose weight, what advice? And so here is the sentence at the end. If my friend asked me how to lose weight, I would suggest the following two things, a balanced diet and exercise. Uh, so if you see here, if my friend asked me, so this is one way that you can form it. If my friend asked me, I would do this. Another thing if you could say is, if I were asked, which I believe is what's in the ultimate template. Let's go back to the ultimate template really quickly. Yeah, so in the ultimate template, you'll see here, if I were forced to choose. So um, here, th this template works if there's two choices, like do you agree or disagree? But this other question is about advice. And so when you're asking about advice, uh, it would be better to say, um, if I had to tell my friend. Okay, so that's when you want to use this conditional sentence. So in this situation, you're going to say if, and then you're going to use a noun or pronoun here, the, the subject. So if my friend asked, if I were asked, if I had to choose, if I were forced to choose. So that's the first part. It's going to be one of those. And then you put a comma after that. I would, and then the base form of the verb. If I were forced to choose, let's say, for example, the question is, do you agree or disagree? All high school students should wear school uniforms. If I were forced to choose, I would say that all students should not wear school uniforms like that. Okay. Um, in this situation, if my friend asked me how to lose weight, I would say, I would suggest, and then you have the, the base form of the verb. So that's the first place that you can put a conditional towards the end of your introduction paragraph. Now, the second place that you can put a conditional sentence to expand your vocabulary and make your grammar look a bit more complicated is towards the end of your body paragraphs. Basically, it should be the conclusion of your personal example. By now, you probably know that in your writing, in the body paragraph, you probably have a personal example to connect to your reason. So here, for example, uh, the person says, the writer here says, a well-balanced diet has been proven to help people lose weight. So they think a well-balanced diet. Now, they should have a personal example explaining why they believe that. They're going to talk about their mother here and talk about my mother, okay? So after you tell your story, it's very important that your end shows like a lesson that was learned, shows why this example helped inform your reason. It should show how your personal example is connected to your reason and what happened. So you use this conditional to imagine a past. A past. This conditional is called, it's a very complicated word, you don't need to know it, but past unreal conditional. You imagine something in the past and what your life would be like if it, if it happened. If my mother had never consulted a nutritionist, she would have never known the importance of a well-balanced diet. So you see, this is pretty difficult grammar, which is why I teach it. Because if you can just put this one difficult grammar form in your essay, it shows a pretty strong handle of English grammar. So the, the form here is if and then the subject, and then had. If I had gone, it's like the past perfect. So if I had gone to college, if I had 
lived in America, if I had been born to somebody else. So that, that's the expression. And then the second clause is I would have. I would have never known, I would have never been, I would have lived, I would have seen, so on. And so that, that's the structure of that conditional sentence. Try this and see how it works. I know it's a little difficult, so uh, these strategies are a little bit difficult to do, so it's up to you if you want to actually do them or not. But uh, the reason, I hope you understand my reason, and I just want to go back to the grading criteria really quickly because you're probably struggling, struggling with vocabulary and grammar, and I want to find some ways for you to improve your vocab vocabulary and grammar and make your sentences a bit longer and to get that score just a couple points more to where it needs to be. You have made it to the end. You have learned how to use advanced templates and why they're important so they can show to the e-rater and the human grader that you have an expansive vocabulary and English grammatical knowledge. 